are these people? All right. Well, Al Jazeera got banned from Israel. Um, it's not the first time Al Jazeera has had some issues. Me and Indy covered a long time ago when the Al Jazeera building got bombed. Um, they didn't bomb this building this time, but we're going to get into it. So this is from Juan Cole over at Informed Comment, your sheer post, right? Talking about how Israel bans Al Jazeera journalists. So Ann Arbor, uh, the comment to protect the Committee to Protect Journalists on Sunday condemned the Israeli cabinet's decision to ban the Al Jazeera news network in Israel. The network's office was closed and its equipment was confiscated. Israeli cable channels were forced to delete Al Jazeera from their offerings, and even its website has been blocked for Israeli residents. Since Israeli news channels do not show the effects of the government's total war on Gaza civilians, the Qatar-based channel has been one of those few sources of comprehensive coverage of the Gaza campaign for those Israelis who know English or Arabic. On April 1st, the Israeli parliament, dominated by the country's far-right parties, passed a law permitting the government to halt the broadcast of foreign channels in Israel if the content is deemed to be a threat to the country's security during the ongoing war. Could you imagine if any other country did that? Just like banned another country's journalists because they're a threat to our national security? Like, I could, I could think of one. Um, communications Minister Shlom Karhi called Al Jazeera an incitement channel and a mouthpiece of Hamas. It was a ridiculous charge for anyone who actually watches the live stream of Al Jazeera in English. Carlos Martinez de la Serna, the New York based director of the Committee to Protect Journalists, said CPJ condemns the closure of Al Jazeera's office in Israel and the blocking of its websites. This move sets an extremely alarming precedent for restricting international media outlets working in Israel. The Israeli cabinet must allow Al Jazeera and all internal media outlets to openly operate freely in Israel, especially during wartime. The Israeli military has killed some 140 journalists in Gaza since it has sophisticated drone surveillance and facial recognition programs and other forms of electronic surveillance Al Jazeera reports that some of the surviving journalists are convinced that their vehicles and convoys were deliberately targeted despite being clearly identified as press. One of the corruption cases being pursued in Israeli courts against Netanyahu has to do with his pressuring an Israeli newspaper to give him favorable coverage by threatening that otherwise the late casino mogul Sheldon Adelson would flood the market with free newspapers hurting the profits of Yeda Ahronov. These names, man. So, um, I have that. I don't know why that's on top of that, but, um, uh, this video will not be able to be showed in Israel now, but, you know, you can watch it here if you're in Israel watching. Um, we'll let you. Um, but here we go. We'll let Al Jazeera explain some of this. Um, if I can, here we go. And here, and here, and play. An unprecedented sight. Israeli police raid Al Jazeera's workspace in occupied East Jerusalem after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet voted to shut down the network's operations. The government order, which was unanimously agreed upon, includes confiscating its broadcast equipment, preventing the network's broadcasts, and blocking its websites. The government has now unanimously ordered the closure of the incitement mouthpiece of Hamas in Israel, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera's broadcast was taken off Israel's main cable provider in the hours after the order. The emergency measure will last for 45 days, with the possibility of an extension for an additional 45 days. In a statement, Al Jazeera Media Network condemned the measure, saying in part, Israel's ongoing suppression of the free press, seen as an effort to conceal its actions in the Gaza Strip, stands in contravention of international and humanitarian law. Israel's direct targeting and killing of journalists, arrests, intimidation and threats will not deter Al Jazeera from its commitment to cover whilst more than 140 Palestinian journalists have been killed since the beginning of the war on Gaza. The network vehemently rejects the allegations presented by Israeli authorities, suggesting professional media standards have been violated. 
Last month, the White House said Israel's plans to close the network were, quote, concerning. A move like this is concerning. We believe in the freedom of the press. It is critical. It is critically important, and the United States supports the critically important work journalists around the world do. And so, and that includes those who are reporting in, uh, in the conflict in Gaza. The widely criticized Pause move there. was also condemned. Does that include independent media as well that you're, that, that Google and like all your are trying to suppress? Does that include, uh, like Julian Assange, who is stuck in Belmarsh right now? Does that include, nope. like all the independent journalists who we probably don't even, are not able to kind of share their stories given the suppression that they experience? Yep. Yep. By the Foreign Press Association, which urged the Israeli government to reverse what it called a harmful step, adding that this was a dark day for the media and a dark day for democracy. Hamda Salhout, Al Jazeera. Hagai Matar is executive director of Plus 972 magazine, which provides independent commentary and news from Israel and Palestine. Uh, sir, you're joining us from Tel Aviv. Thank you for your time today. Your thoughts first on this decision by the Israeli government to shut down Al Jazeera in Israel. I think, first of all, it's clearly a, a criminal and very dangerous decision, uh, an attack on free speech and the freedom of the press. Um, it's also an attack mostly on Israeli citizens, because I think the two main things that are going to happen alongside the attack on Al Jazeera journalists, which are also, of course, victims of this, will be one that uh, while Al Jazeera will be able to continue reporting around the world, they will not be able to do reporting within Israel. So the voices of Israeli uh, society um, will be heard less on Al Jazeera because of this. Uh, so this is one harm to the Israeli society. The other is uh, making it more difficult to hear different voices. Um, we have very limited access to information coming out of Gaza in uh, Israeli media outlets. And I think it's essential for Israelis to have other media outlets to go to and, and check and read and see and view uh, to get information that is not there in Israeli sources. But big picture, what's this going to change? I mean, granted, our teams in Israel, you know, in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, they can't work. Um, but we're still here. We're still going to report the news. Uh, the rest of the world can still see us outside of Israel. So what's the point? I think th there are two points. One is uh, to make it more difficult for Israelis to see, uh, which I think is more important for, for the government than um, what the rest of the world sees. The other is basically serving the base. We have this issue that Netanyahu and his party in the far right um, have been failing this war. This is you know, fact. I'm not even talking about the massacre of tens of thousands of Palestinians, the ethnic cleansing, the destruction all of that. Um, but even from an Israeli perspective, after seven months, people are saying the hostages, most of them aren't back, many of them are dying. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a victory at hand. So doing something like this is a way to appease the base, to say, look, we're doing something to fight our enemies and let's pin all our failures on Al Jazeera, just like we would on um, students in U.S. campuses. Do you see them at some point reversing this decision? Because interestingly, the law, the way the, the law is structured, um, this decision is applicable for 45 days, but then they would have to renew it if they want to keep um, banning Al Jazeera from Israel in a month and a half. Yes, and, and it is subject to um, court supervision. So it will be very interesting to see what happens when we go to the courts. I'm not putting a lot of faith in that process. I don't see them reversing this measure in the near future mm. uh, unless this is uh, some sort of uh, a ploy within negotiations and what the government may think is a tool to pressure the Qatari government um, in the negotiations for the release of hostages. If that's the case, maybe they will reverse it as part of a deal for a ceasefire. But um, I have to say, I'm very pessimistic about the degree to which the Israeli government is interested in such a deal. And therefore, I'm also not very optimistic about reversing this. 
Okay, Hagai Matar, Executive Director of Plus 972 Magazine. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news. Yeah, you listen to her. Subscribe to our channel. Um, but anyway, anything you want to say before finishing this out? I mean, I mean, I said it in the last uh, last segment. You know, it's just the idea of this is the last step, or one among the last steps, to ensure that. You know, this genocide is silent. Now, yeah. the thing is, fortunately, we have social media, so it wouldn't be silent completely. No. But given, you know, what our government is trying to do with TikTok, and funny enough, I saw a clip, I think it was with, um, who was it? Shoot. Um, I think it was with Blinken and... I forgot the other politician who it was. They basically admitted just point blank that, you know, you know how like in government they were like, we're concerned about TikTok given like safety yeah. concerns with China and blah, blah. They basically straight out admitted that. No, it was, you know, there was too many, too much pro-Palestinian oh, yeah. coverage. They just straight up admitted it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, thank you, uh, Jamie. Um, it was Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney, uh, yeah. Yeah, that you know that um, Link was talking to. Um, so you know, um, so yeah, it's just the idea of trying to suppress the very information that people need in order for them to be fully aware and have you know standing as to what's going on, but also you know for a way for Israel to kind of control, continue to control the narrative with our support and. Yeah. You know, and it's just going to be very easy to kind of smear or dismiss, given, you know, as they said, you know, like they, Israel has killed over a hundred journalists. Like we reported on one prominent one, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Arir, oh, really? uh, like back in December. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and it's funny again, uh, but. Monday, it was World Press Freedom Day. Right. And when did this happen? Like, no talks about Shireen, no talks about Rafat, no talks about, you know, any of the press. Right. Honestly, there lives. should have been, there should have been more of an outrage about this. Yeah. Given Monday, again, was World Press Freedom Day. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that, the, like, Israel shut down. Well, Al Jazeera in the country, in the state, given their coverage mm -hmm. uh, for basically exposing them for the genocidal maniacs that they are. I, it's it's just insane. And then our country, you know, the gall to say, oh, we support, you know, the idea of free speech. Meanwhile, you're suppressing it here. So mm -hmm. you can take a seat. And you said it was Friday. Um, and he's listing Friday. other Palestinian journalists. As well, Motaz Aziaza and Wal El Dadu. So, you know, but uh, this article continues. Um, so, banning foreign news channels and reporters is not a new thing in the Middle East or the wider world. It has usually been done by governments that the U.S. denounces as autocratic. Israel has now joined their ranks. For instance, the U.S. State Department says in a report critical of press censorship in Syria. On July 8th, the Ministry of Information canceled the accreditation of the BBC in areas under its control following the outlet's June 27th investigative report into the regime's involvement in the Captagon drug trade, according to local media. The report adds citizens widely used satellite dishes, although the regime jammed some foreign Arabic network. The cancelization of Al Jazeera's accreditation by the Netanyahu regime, jamming of Al Jazeera, Israel would be hard to distinguish from the press policy of Bashir al-Assad in Syria. As for Iran, the State Department says the government jammed satellite broadcasts a continuous practice since at least 2003, it adds. The Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance severely limited the controlled foreign media organization's ability to work in the country. 
the ministry required foreign correspondents to provide detailed travel plans and topics of proposed stories before granting visas, limited their ability to travel within the country, and forced them to work with a local minder. State slams Iran, saying authorities routinely cited laws on protecting national security to arrest or punish critics of the government and the human rights defenders or to deter criticism of government policies or officials. Yet the April yet the April 1st law passed by the Israeli Knesset appeals to exactly the same grounds, protecting national security, to permit expulsion and banning of foreign correspondents and channels. That is, there may be a difference in degree between Iran's person and Israel, but there is not a difference in kind. The grounds cited by Israel for closing down foreign news operations in the country are not different from those used by Putin's Russia, the State Department notes. Expanding the definition of sensitive data, the FSB published in 2021 a list of topics that be used against the security of Russia, including information and assessments of the country's military security sector and space agency, Roscosmos. Individuals who collected information in the specified categories could be subject to designation as foreign agents. Just the government headed by Netanyahu, which had directly funded to Hamas for years before the October 7th attack, snarkily implied that Al Jazeera was overly friendly with Hamas. So the Russians used xenophobic grounds to censor, according to the State Department. During the year, authorities used the law banning cooperation with undesirable foreign organizations to restrict free expression. For example, in January, the independent Russian news outlet Medusa was added to the list of undesirable organizations. Russia has forced many journalists to register as foreign agents. The law allowed authorities to label individuals, both Russian and American citizens, as foreign agents. If they disseminated foreign media to an unspecified number of persons, receiving funding from abroad or after a 2020 amendment, carry out the interests of a foreign state, as to hear. Uh, I'll remind people. Um... The amendment specified that a foreign journalist performing the functions of a foreign agent incompatible with his professional journalist would be declared an individual foreign agent. They had to register and mark the content as produced by a foreign agent, as do we here, one told me, by the way. Um, this is clearly how Netanyahu views Al Jazeera journalists. This fear of international journalism also afflicts the government of Kim Jong-un in North Korea, of which state observes the government prohibited ordinary citizens from listening to foreign media broadcasts and subjected violators to severe punishment, radios and television sets, unless altered, receive only domestic programming, the government attempted to jam all foreign radio broadcasts. So, one call almost figuring it out. Um, but, you know, like, sometimes you gotta have other stuff to wake people up. So, but yeah, any, any thoughts before we head out of here? I think we're, you know, support independent media, as another person uh, in the chat might tell you. Well, actually, I do have a, well, not a thought, but do you mind sharing? I sent it to you in the Discord. Um, yeah, I can find that. Um, I just sent it to you, so. Because um, yeah. I think this is very appropriate given this segment. Um, yep. Hold on. You that you clipped so well i clipped it but you gave it yeah um here say to, to this gentleman Down? say we played this a few weeks mm -hmm. ago but i think given everything that's been happening and this actually was doing very well when i clipped it out and posted it on monday on Twitter, I think it's I think it's very appropriate given this segment you just did that we hear this again. Yeah, I would just like to say to to this gentleman, I would like to say to this gentleman and all other people who are not blessed with melanin at this point in time to understand that what has happened in our history is that you have been misinformed as much as we have been misinformed. Much of the information that is brought forth not only from Dr. Muhammad but other areas, other scholars are not available to you, as a sister said, in your curriculums that you have for 400 years when you did not allow us to read and write and was being hidden. Whether you, sir, personally 
only did that or not, it was a legacy that was passed on to you. And I end by saying the Holocaust is simply the greatest atrocity on film. Ours was not filmed. Yeah, I would just like. So. I mean, add the Palestinians to that list. Yeah. You know, because their education infrastructure is got decimated. Like, no universities, no schools, journalists dead, like, any means of information to even, even just the idea of carrying out their legacy to future generations is in danger of being extinct now. Yeah. All at the hand of Israel. And, and that should be very concerning, I think, especially given you know, Israel being a proxy to us, because if you think that Israel, like, if you think that the, the Americans are not, it, uh, it, it's not capable of happening here, you're dead wrong. Yeah, it is you know, happening. You can yeah. All, yeah, it is happening here. I think just in terms of, you know, people are worried about China, you know, spying on you, like, China. Trump gave, a, gave the goods on that mm -hmm. already like when he was president. So, you know, the government already has your information that they could sell off. Yep. Name their price, you know, and you're worried about China, what they're going to do. Like, yep. China has no interest in knowing, you know, what you're looking on your phone late at night when you're all alone. But our country does. Well, so... Yeah, but I think it's just the idea of like, you know, and I say this time and time again, it's the idea, you know, like, white tragedy and white resistance gets, you know, like, popularized and movies and books mm -hmm. and like, we learn all about it in our curriculum as the standard. In terms of, you know, how to move in terms of living in the West, while resistance, anything related to people of color, is either suppressed, not talked about, hidden, mm -hmm. or just straight up lied about. Net and um, <laughs> what? Right. Um, <laughs> so it's ugh. just. But again, as I said earlier, this is going to be one of the greatest strategies that, ironically, given the information that we have now, could have been prevented. But we're just falling right into history in terms of not doing all that we can possibly can to stop this genocide from really being fulfilled in terms of actually really decimating the Palestinian community and and people are too scared or too bought to say anything and worse yet even stand up against it. Like again, college students, you know, salute you because it, and they've said many of them, they're willing to give up their lives and careers for the betterment of humanity in this case. What are our politicians sacrificing? You know, why is the squad sacrificing in order to ensure the well-being of Palestine? Like, they're not. So, you know, so it's just the idea of, you know, our college students have more balls than the people who we put in office that actually has the means to do something, and they're no. not doing it. No. No, clearly not. Which is why, like I said earlier, support independent media. You know, there's a reason why we're deboosted and demonetized, as we talked about in the segment. So go to kodashv.com slash any news network or scan the QR code on your screen. If you want to help keep the lights on over here in Indie Town. Um, otherwise, just like and subscribe, hit the share button, comment. We're heavily suppressed. So please share this with your like minded friends. We appreciate all. The new people showing up and hitting the subscribe button. So, you know, keep doing you.